Hey everybody, I'm back again with another video. This time I'm going over the NVIDIA Shield TV 2017 edition. Now I bought this device about 10 months ago, so I have a good idea of build quality and also best use case scenarios for this kind of device. But anyway, let's get started with my top five favorite things to do with this kind of device. Then we'll go over build quality and then we'll end up with final thoughts and whether I would buy this device again. Let's get started with another video. Let's start with number five. Game recording to Twitch or share drive. So I have uploaded a few games up from the built-in game recording in the Shield TV. And it works well as long as it is an overly taxing game. Sometimes you will get a little stuttering. But for the most part, it works well. So... Just pick your game wisely. Number four, emulations and retro gaming. Okay, so emulation and retro gaming. Why is this device better suited than most other Android devices? Well, number one, it's got the NVIDIA Tegra X1 processor. On top of that, it's got a 256 core NVIDIA graphics GPU. That and 3 gigs of RAM make this device handle retro gaming and emulation with no problem. On top of that, in the kit, it comes with the remote controller, which is only $20 more for this version and is definitely worth it. So I would highly recommend getting the controller with the kit. Number 3. Streaming games and built-in Steam plus Gamecast. Streaming games, built-in Steam, and Gamecast. These are all things built just for gamers. So if you have a lot of games and you have a GTX box, you can stream your games with Gamecast over to them. You can also purchase games and utilize your Steam account. So this is a very gamer-centric box. They also have a service called GeForce Now, which allows you to play games, stream them, from their servers, which seems like a pretty cool concept. I haven't really played on this much, but I'm planning on firing that up pretty soon. Number two, paid streaming audio and video apps. Streaming audio and video apps. The Shield TV does this exceptionally well, and it's one of the only devices that natively, right out of the box, does all of these different apps, whether it's Netflix, Amazon Video, uh, Voodoo, Hulu, all of them just work and they work exceptionally well. On top of that, the remote control has a uh, 3.5 millimeter jack so you can plug headphones right into it and listen to them without making a bunch of noise. This definitely helps if you have a significant other. Number one, Cody. The last but definitely not least is Cody. It is the best multimedia streaming application that I've come across so far and it works perfect on the Shield TV 2017 edition. It's the only application that I've seen so far that is a one-stop shop for all the movies, television shows, live sporting events, and live television channels that I've seen all put together in one place. So now that we've seen all the things I use it for, how about we take a quick look at the build quality and overall general uses that you can do with the Shield TV. So let's take a look at the build quality of all three devices. The Shield TV, the remote, and the controller are all super premium looking, well put together, and have held up awesome in the first 10 months. The size of the Shield TV is a little bit thinner than a GoPro 4 uh, on the thin side and then if you were to take it and put it on the larger side of the unit it's just a little bit thicker than the GoPro 4 on that side so it's relatively thin it's very angular it's got this cool design and it's got a bunch of stuff on the back so here's where all the main ports are the USB the flash drive, you've got the HDMI port, you've got an, a network port, 
and then you've got the power port and then you have some exhaust ports on the back side and on the bottom so this is how it releases the heat it doesn't get overly hot but it does get a little bit warm to the touch now you can see it's slightly smaller than my hand and then the remote is very small thin and uh, has just minimal buttons so it has a back a home a directional an enter and a microphone and then right here is the volume control uh, which is capacitive so overall this is probably going to be the thing that you control the shield tv with the most you'll use the controller mostly for gaming or for watching movies with a headphone speaking of the controller here it is now this is a redesign for the 2017 it's much more angular and smaller and compact you have your trigger buttons on the back side you have your uh, power port so you can charge the unit and it lasts a pretty long time on a single charge um, you just gotta be careful not to let it die all the way now you have your microphone in the front you got your home button you have your uh, directional buttons and your joysticks and everything is really tactile and very comfortable I really really like the joystick and you do have that headphone jack at the bottom of the unit also okay so let's look at the Nvidia Shield TV in the wilds here it's on my shelf and it blends right in with my DVDs and games it's got a really cool angular look to it and the LED on it actually makes it look very futuristic and angular. I like the looks of it. I think that if you could put this pretty much anywhere and no one would even know that it was there unless you pointed it out. So I would have to say that it's also one of the best looking uh, Android TVs on the market today. It is way, way smaller than a PS4 or an Xbox. So let's go over to the website and check out the differences between a Shield TV 2017 and other Android and iOS devices. Now, as you can see here, there's a SmartThings adapter. It's called the SmartThings Link, and it actually turns your Shield TV into a SmartThings hub. So this device has come out recently, so I haven't had a chance to test it yet, but it looks pretty promising especially if you don't already have a Samsung hub. Uh, the standard device does not come with the controller, but for $20 more you can get the controller. And then of course, if you wanted a larger hard drive, you can go for the Pro. But I just went for the standard one because I just added a flash drive to my unit. And so for a minimal cost, you can turn it pretty much into a Pro. I only had 128 gigs, but that's plenty for me. So as you can see here, it's 179 with the remote and no controller, and it's 199 for the remote and the controller. So I think it's well worth the cost to get that controller. It's an awesome controller. Like I said, it has a three and a half millimeter jack, which allows you to listen to your headphones through it, uh, so you don't have to make a bunch of noise in the house. And let's look at a list comparing other media streamers here. So one of the main reasons that I picked the Shield TV over some other streamers was the fact that it is an Android box, which means all of the Google apps are going to be native to it. On top of that, Amazon Video and Kodi can be loaded on this box with relative ease and without sideloading a bunch of applications. So that with Pandora and Google Music. So if you have a lot of the Google ecosystem as part of your devices, then this device is going to work well for you. It also has 4K entertainment native to the box. On top of that, you do have all of the gaming aspects as far as doing classic games, retro games. Uh, you can do the streaming games. You can do Steam. There's Gamecast and there's GeForce Now. Now the GeForce Now costs $7.99 a month, but if you're really, really into gaming, then this might be something that you find attractive. Uh, on top of that, you do have the hands-free search. 
You have the built-in microphone on the controller and on the remote, so you can uh, treat it like a Google Home if you'd like to. You can add the Smart Things link that costs $14.99, I believe, and that will allow you to talk to all the smart devices in your home and control them from your Shield TV. So even after 10 months, the NVIDIA Shield TV is still far and away better than the rest of the streamers. You can get other boxes off of Amazon that can stream probably almost as good, but cannot do the gaming, cannot do the uh, home automation portion of it, cannot do the audio search as well and be Google centric. And then the other thing is, is that NVIDIA is a very large company with a really good warranty. And if you get something from China, you are kind of, you know, in a crapshoot, you know, you get it from Amazon, but you don't know the company that stands behind it. So who should buy the Shield TV 2017? I would say anybody who really likes doing gaming, but also wants the ability to do streaming, do Netflix, Kodi, Amazon Video, and also wants to do things like Plex, which I forgot to mention earlier that it also can be a Plex server, and also do voice control for creating a smart home environment. If, you, if that describes you, then I believe that the NVIDIA Shield TV 2017 edition is for you.